Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm gonna be showing you guys kind of the process of these cabinet transformations. Um, so before we decided to spend a bunch of money on replacing our cabinets and countertops, we decided to try out the cabinet transformation and also the countertop transformation. And basically it's a kit that you can buy from like Home Depot um, or you can buy it from the actual Rust-Oleum website and you can pretty much redo your kitchen without spending a ton of money so we're gonna go ahead and try it out and um, I just wanted to give you guys a few tips just kind of things that we've learned along the way basically what we did is we watched the instructional video that comes with this kit and um, first of all when you buy this you buy the kit and then they tint the like paint or the bonding coat at Home Depot so you choose which color you want it comes in like 10 different colors we chose linen which is not the whitest white and it's not like it's kind of in between the two colors that we were thinking about um, we were kind of in between um, linen and quilters white quilters white looks a little bit yellow so we're trying out linen and then um, you can either leave it without the glaze or you can add the glaze which makes it like a little bit darker and shows the wood grain a little bit more. So we got started yesterday and um, one of the things that I wanted to tell you guys was be sure that you make a map. That's what it says to do in the video is to draw out a map and that I would really follow that guideline because you're, you have to put all of the cabinet doors and drawers back up. So it's really convenient to have everything kind of stick with what it's supposed to go with. So I drew out a map. We have about 26 doors and drawer fronts. And then we just kind of kept the number. We took a piece of uh, painter's tape and put the number on the door. And then we would make like um, whatever bag that the hardware went in, we just numbered it. So we know exactly where everything goes exactly which hardware to put on what door and it just makes it a ton easier so we did that um, the next step was to wash the cabinets and this was just to basically deglaze the cabinets to get any shininess off of the cabinet doors and drawer fronts so we use the cabinet transformation deglosser you just basically use this um, scrubber you have like a bucket of water with nothing in it to rinse it. Before starting the deglosser, you want to make sure that you have a lot of space. Every door and drawer needs space to dry. So we basically took our whole dining room area, covered it with plastic, and then we were able to set up cups and then just um, place the door on the cups while they were drying so you just basically take like three cups turn them upside down so the door has somewhere to dry on both sides but you basically take this port on the sponge just scrub the heck out of it and then when you're done you take your bucket of water and then you just rinse it and then you um, dry it off with a dry towel and then you place it on your cup so then it has plenty of time to dry. So our entire kitchen is covered with all of our drawers and they're basically drying right now. Also, I have an example to show you. So this is one of our cabinet doors. It's a super old style. That's exactly why we wanted to change it. But right in the center we had um, a knob. So we wanted to fill those in. We don't want those there when we paint them so we had to just take some wood filler and we filled all of the holes in so that was basically just on the doors if you want to change the style of your drawers like if you have handles on your drawers you can go ahead and fill those in at this time too but as you can see there are no glossy it's not glossy anymore that deglosser has removed all of the gloss and that's what you want because then your bonder is really going to stick to that um, another thing I wanted to mention that didn't come with the kit is this little scrubber. This works, it's like a little brush, it's like a plastic brush. This works really great for getting into like the little crevices 
that you weren't really able to get into with the scrubber and you really want to make sure that that area is clean especially above the stove and above the microwave anywhere where you're cooking and you're touching the drawers like you really don't realize how greasy those places get we also have a rice cooker that we use a lot so above the cabinet where that was it was really really dirty so we just want to make sure that you clean them really well so while we were waiting for the cabinets to dry after we cleaned them I went ahead and decided to reline the drawers so I just bought some contact paper from Home Depot it was super easy you just cut the um, dimensions and then place the contact paper in and then I also taped around the drawers that way we can just paint right around that and we won't have to worry about that and then for the drawers we just set them on the edge of the table and as you can see they'll have plenty of room to dry we'll set them up so that they have um, plenty of space to dry after we paint those so now that we've got step one done now i'm excited to move on to step two and this is the bond coat this is where we're going to get that white color so we apply one coat, let it dry for two hours, and then apply another coat. We're going to go ahead and start with the cabinet boxes, and then we're going to move on to the doors and drawers. So I will come back and show you what it looks like when we're finished with that. Hey guys, we're back and the cabinets are all finished. So where we left off was um, at the deglossing process. And after we did that, we noticed that the cupboard doors were kind of old. The decorative trim around the edge started to separate. so. I took some Alex uh, trim caulking and filled all the gaps and stuff before we painted, uh, went through all the tops of the cupboards, um, tightened up the trim that's up there, caulked that as well. We puttied all the holes, which I think we covered that, mm -hmm. um, but went through and found any, n any nicks and stuff in the wood, filled all that stuff. Then we did the bond coats. Um, it says to do two bond coats, and when we did that, the cupboards looked blue um, and a lot of that dark wood was showing through. So we ended up doing at least three, some places we did four coats. Um, so that took, that took an extra couple days. Um, then after that we did the top coat, let it cure for 24 hours, we hung everything. And instead of using the old hardware, we went ahead and bought new hinges and also new drawer pulls and doorknobs, and I think it made a big difference. Um, I don't think that they would have looked as nice if we would have just painted the old hinges and put them back on because they were pretty old. They were kind of rusty looking and Somewhat broke. Yeah. yeah, so we just went ahead and um, spent the money to get the extra hardware. And I believe we spent a total of $225. This was $75 and the rest we spent on the hardware, which for $225 to give your kitchen a facelift, it's totally worth it. Um, but one thing that I did want to mention and that we both wanted to tell you guys is not to take any shortcuts. Spend the time, you know, make sure that everything from the start to finish, every step, spend your time, make sure that you do it properly. Because I think that um, because we did that, they turned out much better than they would have if we would. I mean, we started off and when we deglossed, there were some that weren't all the way done. We could have just left it, but we went ahead and re, yeah, we, we had to re degloss some of them just to make sure that all of the gloss was gone. And then making sure that each um, coat of paint dries in between, I think was just really worth it. And just the total process took a week but it was worth it. Um, our kitchen was torn apart, but um, just taking those little extra steps in the caulking and just things like that, I think it made a big difference. And the only reason it really took a week was, you know, because we, when we did the bond coats, we did one in the morning and then, what was the dry time? It was just a couple hours. The dry time was only a couple hours, but instead of putting another coat on that day, uh, we just took it easy and did one coat per day. So if you wanted to, it could be a lot faster. Um, I believe the dry time is like two or three hours. Mm -hmm. So if you put it on in the morning, you could do all your coats in one day. But we just took the time, um, did it slow, made sure everything dried, um, fill in the holes, doing all that stuff. You know, it is a lot faster of a process, or it can be, but we just kind of took our time. And I think it shows, it paid, it, it definitely paid off. 
Yeah. So. so it turned out great. Next we're going to be doing countertops. Maybe we'll do a video on that too. But thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.